Thank you. And, and Dan, great to know that you've blocked off your schedule for through tonight. Does that mean you can join me for the uh, inspirational midnight snack talk to everyone? Is that, yeah. <laughs> All right. So, so we to wrap up now. Uh, actually, one an administrative thing. So. After this, after these talks, a reminder for all participants to sign in, check in with their teams to get ready for the hackathon. And, uh, and obviously a very big thank you to all of the speakers we've had here. We've had you know, speakers who are so busy, urgently being called away. They're working on so many different things. Um, having such expertise in different backgrounds, and we are really fortunate to have their time and expertise and support. So just to, to recap for some of the, the ideas presented here today, um, we started off and, and we talked about some of the needs around the opioid crisis. Um, Letitia Ingram brought up the, the need for faster and, and higher quality data. Um, and HHS is, is urgently uh, request better and faster data. Um, we talked about many times integration of multiple disciplines from public health, medicine, law enforcement, justice system. This is a difficult, it's a complicated problem. It requires a lot of different expertise, engineering, all different areas. Um, April Rivera summed up in, in one slide, uh, did a great job in, in summing up some, some other areas, three areas of, of need. One, we need a reduction in opioid prescribing. Um, this was also touched on by Dr. Chakravarti and, and Willis. Uh, we need to figure out how do we reduce the prescribing of, of opioids and, and other, are there other alternatives? And what happens among the patients who are already being prescribed? How do we transition? That's, that's a, a current topic. Uh, we also need integration of medication-assisted therapies as alternatives and to try to help address um, the, the growing burden of, of overdose. Uh, we need availability of alternatives and risk reduction strategies, like finding out about naloxone availability, um, more exploration of things like CBD. We need to address the stigma that patients are experiencing on opioids. Many of them have been, as Kieran Gill pointed out, been prescribed opioids by their physicians. And so it's, it doesn't seem comfortable to, to use traditional services like Alcoholics Anonymous. But so how do we do that? How do we address those needs? Well, we've heard about different tools that are available also. Uh, we heard about uh, big data, lots of data. We've heard about electronic health records, um, social media, and other types of data, and, and online forum data, and how those can be analyzed. Figueles talked to us about that. Um, we've heard about, we heard about uh, interventions like the HOPE online community and, and other behavior change methods. And we heard about other alternatives like over-the-counter painkillers um, and potentially cannabis being used as an alternative. Those should be explored. We heard a personal story from April which, which really just, it's so personal and, and lets you connect with how she and others are feeling. And we heard about implementation and, and strategies, studies, and, and needs. Um, we, heard, we heard from Dr. Cooper on how do we study how to accelerate scale up and implementation of new solutions through things like learning health systems. And Dr. Mittman about necessary but not sufficient conditions and how to include things like peer role models, key stakeholders, incentives, and external pressure to try to drive changes in this area. Now, we, in planning this, we've had a head start in gaining many of those insights because we've been really lucky in having an advisory board who's from 
all these different areas who's helped guide us on these needs in, in these different areas. And so as a result of that, we've set up this morning to try to educate all of you as hackathon participants uh, and to try to give you both education here as well as many of the tools along with data, knowledge, and key stakeholders who can help you to try to implement solutions that you've come up with. And of course, we have funding from our sponsors to be able to support that work in the future. We have for each one of the four tracks, we have a $5,000 prize. We also have funding to provide the winners to go on to conferences and present their work at a conference and continued travel to meet with the key stakeholders in different parts of the state and even federal level to help learn about how to implement these solutions. And we will follow up. We have surveys and interviews that we will conduct to learn about this process, what are the barriers to implementing the solutions that each of you come up with, and how to improve that in the future. And I think, you know, as, as someone outside of the, my academic world, um, I've been involved in startups for, for many years now and, and just love that feeling and excitement of entrepreneurship and, and, and building things quickly. Um, and I've also, through that process, been involved in spending a lot of time, you know, often a couple years of my life building something that no one ever uses. And so I think one thing that's especially exciting about this opportunity is that we've partnered and, and we have this advisory board of key stakeholders who are so committed to trying to help each of you as teams, as entrepreneurs, as diverse groups building software to try to help so that the work that you do in just 24 hours of your time, and I don't want to, not just 24 hours because you're, um, you're going to be working really hard, uh, but they will be working with you to be able to help have your solutions implemented. They have the ability to help be champions for you if you build a good solution to address their needs. So I think that's one of, or, or maybe the most exciting thing about what we'll be starting here for the next 24 hours. So I'm gonna leave you actually with, uh, you know, you've heard, you've heard things here today um, and hopefully it's connected with you. You've definitely got edu you've gotten educated, you've, um, you have data, you have tools, but, but with, as I presented, 75% of you are engineers and, and maybe are not personally connected to this other than through um, stories or, or maybe from April's presentation. But this is not something, this is not a crisis that is separate where there is no one who is not at risk here. Um, so, for example, in, in our HOPE study that, that Kieran talked about, we have, we conduct a, a peer role model training where we work with peer role models, as she mentioned. And one of the peer role models, um, so we, we sat around with them and, and each talked about their background. And one of them, he was, he studied physics in college, went off, and uh, worked in engineering, worked in IT, and uh, then while, while working in technology, he ended up suffering an accident and experienced chronic pain. He was prescribed opioids by his, by his physician and quickly became addicted. And he was telling us there that, you know, he knew something was wrong. I mean, he was this, he's very intelligent, engineer, and within nine months, he was hanging out with motorcycle gangs to get black tar heroin. This is not something that is where anyone is immune to this. It affects everyone, it affects all of us. And, and I think we need to remember that, and all of you remember that as we go into the next 24 hours. Now, we'll be around um, this, Again, I want to give a, please everyone join me, give a, a big round of applause for our speakers. Thank you so much, speakers.
Speakers, please, before you leave, there's a, we have gift baskets for you. We have a, a grab gift bag uh, for you to take. And, and no, for all the, the participants, is we're gonna, um, we're gonna you know, get, get, uh, get to talking right after this and, and get into the, the logistics of it. Um, know that this is just the beginning of having this, this group of key stakeholders. So many of, of the speakers here, the advisory board, they have said, not only do we wanna know what happens after this 24 hours, but we wanna stay involved to help address these solutions and help try to implement successful change in this area. So we're really excited about all of you and what you have to bring, and we will talk to you after lunch.